Well, welcome everyone. I'm really excited to be here today with two incredible instructors. We're here with Matthew Alexander from the US, from New York, and then also Ian McKendry, uh, based in Scotland, although he did spend many, many years uh, in the US in Florida. So welcome, gentlemen. Yeah, Hello. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. This is such an honor for us to be here with you guys today. Um, we are going to pick your brains. Uh, Mad Dog Athletics is really pleased to host uh, this sort of video uh, blog, if you will, this video newsletter. And we're really happy to speak with you um, about your very unique journey within the spinning program, because we think that your stories, your journey, you have a lot to offer uh, our global instructor community. And so we're just going to dive right in if that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Ready when you are, Ian. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Woo! Let's do it. Let's so, do it. what I'd love to do first to start us off, uh, Matthew, I'll start with you. Um, you actually contacted me many months ago, and, and I love that this idea sort of uh, started with you. I love the creativity. Um, but we'd like to learn a little bit more about, you know, who you are and what your unique story is and the, the special circumstances that um, you have experienced in your spinning journey. Um, you've shared with us that you are on the autism spectrum. And so if you could just sort of talk about what that means, uh, what, what it means to have autism and perhaps one of the some of the distinguishing characteristics of autism. Yes, I'd be, I'd be glad to. So great. I'm going to start off with what autism is, because I feel like that will be the fundamental base of everything. So what mm -hmm. autism is, it is a disorder where people tend to think and react differently to situations than, than most people would. And it's that we basically all is that we all think and learn a different way for example mm -hmm. i mean some of the characteristics of autism are the same but it's called the spectrum because it appears in many different ways like mm -hmm. i could, for me my struggles personally are communication with friends sometimes or it can be learning but in another person it could be that they can't talk at all or that they so they can't they can't move or mm. anything like that so really it really depends on the person itself and i'm grateful that i am able to be in the spinning community and mm -hmm. and i'll now get into how i got into spinning so Great. i worked at la fitness by i worked at la fitness about five years ago i think and i was a lifeguard there at the time and I had a membership there. I'm like, why not take a spin class for work? And and this I, was in New York, right? Yeah, this was in New York. Okay. Yeah, and I just fell in love with it. But I never really went back there because it just didn't work on my schedule and mm -hmm. everything like that. So I so then a cup. So then, like two years later, I became obese and I mm. didn't really I wasn't really confident in myself and then once I took my spin class at Crunch in Long Island I fell in love and okay. I truly truly just fell in love with the instructor's energy their passion and their willingness to help people and nah. as after a few classes I'm like I have to get certified like in my head I knew this is what I wanted to do and that wow. if I didn't want to, if I didn't do this, I don't know where I would be because I had missed acting for a while because I, because I would, I ended up going to a school of smaller classes within my district and they didn't have a drama club. So I really missed that theater being on stage. And yeah. honestly, I don't feel like, I honestly am starting to think now as I'm thinking about this more that if I didn't, if I didn't go to the school, I wouldn't have found my passion. And that school is the Meadowbrook Alternative Program, and it is in Merrick, New York. And it's honestly wow. a great school for people with learning disabilities or emotional disabilities. And they really make it just made, They really make smaller classes so that 
people can still get their high school diploma. I still got my regents diploma, which is the highest high school diploma in New York. Um, wow. Thank you. And Fantastic. So shout out to the, how do you say the school's name again? Meadowbrook Alternative Program. Meadowbrook Alternative Program. Shout out to them. Sounds like it was a real resource for you. Yes, it really was, honestly. And I wouldn't be where I am without them today. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to shout out Miss Susan Ellinghouse and Dr. Joseph Netta, who really, and the whole staff there that really helped me to get to where I wanted to be. Yeah. And if it wasn't for their support and for everyone in MathBox support, I would not, I really wouldn't be where I am today. And I wouldn't be having mm -hmm. a career that I love and love. And then I, so then, anyways, let me get back to my story before I go on this long tangent. So, <laughs> So, we know yeah. how that goes, right, Ian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm just, I'm listening. It's like you're, you're taking yeah. me to church right now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So, amen to that. Yes. Yeah, so, in December, so basically after that, and I told my parents I wanted to become a spinning instructor. I was 17 at the time, and I had to obviously have my parents consent to do this because of legal concerns. So mm -hmm. they were like, you have to lose some weight before. Since I was, since I was overweight at the time and I lost about 30 pounds and, and then I'm like, I got to do the certification and I studied that manual. <laughs> I did not stop studying for a month. And, wow. uh, and then I took the training with Heather Anderson Santine who was amazing. And yes. on January 14th, 2019, I officially became an L1 spinning instructor, which I am, I was very, very excited for that. I was literally calling up all my friends that day, <laughs> all my spinning friends saying, hey, I got certified. And I posted on my Facebook page that day that I got certified. <laughs> right? And it, it was literally the best day ever. And then... Uh, that's fantastic. I, and, you know, yeah. let me just interject quickly here. You you bring up so many incredible points as you're starting to share some of your story. And one that really stood out uh, a few moments ago is, you know, I think we can all agree that this journey, the spinning journey, um, but also our personal journeys that impact, um, you know, how we approach the spinning community and how we approach teaching spinning, it really takes a village, right? We yeah. We need the people around us that support us in our goals. And I find that, uh, you know, that is something so compelling about the global spinning community is that it is so unified and it is focused on supporting people for success in their spinning instructor journey, specifically from, from a Mad Dog athletic standpoint. So I, I love that you've brought that up, uh, Matthew. So let's pause there because I love that you, you, you've kind of told us a bit about autism and, and the beginning of your spinning journey. And let's pause there and move over to Ian. Um, Ian, if you could also share just kind of some, uh, you know, nuggets about your initial journey into teaching spinning, how you came about it, and also uh, your unique uh, circumstances, circumstances, which is uh, you have cerebral palsy. And yeah. you have um, a really interesting story to tell as well. So I'll give you the floor here, Ian. Yes. Well, <laughs> first of all, Matthew, <laughs> that was amazing. That was yeah, amazing. Thank you. Um, so for me, uh, I have cerebral palsy. I was diagnosed at uh, 15 months. So I was a baby when I was diagnosed. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, I wasn't. I wasn't born in the U.S. I was born in Scotland. So I was born in Edinburgh. Um, so basically, what cerebral palsy is is it's a condition that affects balance and vision, and everybody's um, condition varies, um, like depending on the person. So for me, it was a um, balance and muscle issue. Um, so how I got into spinning, uh, I've always considered myself like an athletic-minded person um, just because, you know, I always loved sports. I love watching sports on TV. Um, I knew people <laughs> who played sports. Um, so I always loved 
you know, being an athlete. And I always envisioned myself like one day I'm going to be like an athlete and I'm going to play a sport. But of course, with my disability, uh, there wasn't many sports that I could do. Um, so basically how I got into spinning was it was my mom who introduced me to spinning. Um, so shout out to my mom. She is the <laughs> woman behind introducing me to spinning. I give her all the credit. Um, and at the time, I had no idea what spinning was and neither did mom. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember mom took a class at one of our local gyms uh, here in Edinburgh. So we obviously lived in the States since 2000. So then we would travel back and forth for vacation and we would see family. So uh, one time when we were on vacation, my aunt who worked at the gym on reception, she said, you know, have you ever thought about spinning, um, like doing it? So like, shout out to your aunt as well. <laughs> totally. Shout out to Janice. Totally. Um, Janice, my mom, and also my aunt Jackie as well. So she thought, you know, why not try spinning? Why not try spinning? And um, my mom's like, what is that? I have no idea. <laughs> so she literally went into the room and I think remembering back to what she said, because she, she told me this story a million times. She saw somebody who was being helped onto the bike. Mm -hmm. um, I think he might've had like, he was either blind or he had CP, I think he was blind, um, but he was helped onto the bike. And my mom in that instant thought, okay, this is something Ian can do. He wants to be fit. He wants to be part of something. So this is it. So we had our vacation, all that stuff. We saw our family and then we came back to the States. My mom was like, let's try spinning. And of course I had the same reaction. I was like, what is that? What is that? <laughs> what is that? So, so I was the same. I was literally the same. So we searched and searched for a place where I could try this thing that was spinning. So we went to tons of places and we had told them, you know, that I had cerebral palsy, blah, blah, blah. But a lot of places, they weren't sure, like what to think. So, you know, they had no, they were like, cerebral palsy, what's that? You know, so they kind of like turned us down basically not because they didn't like us, but because they weren't, you know, sore, because they were like, oh, cerebral, cerebral palsy, you know, what's, what's this? So then we, like, we're like, oh, are we ever going to find a place? But then we came up across this, like, random studio, which was really close to where we live, and it was a family-owned mm -hmm. studio, mm -hmm. so they had everything there. They had cycling classes I say cycling because I like to class it as indoor cycling mm -hmm. so they had cycling classes they had yoga they had martial arts they had everything <laughs> so we walked in totally we were like what are we doing so then we told them you know my story like we want to try spinning our indoor cycling and they were like there's a class on today whatever you want to try, whether it's Spain or dance or martial arts, yeah, whatever, yeah. we're here for you. Like, so they basically welcomed us in. So welcomed us in with open arms. And I swear this was a family owned place. Um, I think if I remember, I don't think it exists anymore, but I think the place was called okay. Temple Arts. I believe it was called Temple Arts. Okay. And um, so it was a really cool place. So when we walked in, there was actually a cycling class on that day. So we're like, should we do it? Should we do it? So all three of us were there, me, my mom, and my dad. So we <laughs> randomly went in to this cycling class. And from the moment we went in, just everybody was so welcoming, like all the students, like everybody was like, oh, you're going to love it. She's amazing. Like, she's awesome. So and that's the village, right? That is that supportive network of people that makes you feel so welcome 
and that you you have the power to do whatever you set your sights on, right? Mm -hmm. 